Hello again, Saints. I want to thank you for joining us for another Ephesian survey. We're looking at the doctrine of Ephesians and we're looking at the adoption of children contained in the book of Ephesians here. And we're looking at Ephesians survey and this is lesson 15. Lesson 15 and we're looking at the adoption of children. We're yet still in the adoption of children uh, doctrine. That's what we're looking at here. But we are looking at that God has made us as a spectacle to glory. That's to his glory. We being children, adult sons or mature sons or perfect sons are made, made a spectacle to, to his honor and his glory. And what I mean by a spectacle there is when you see when it says it made us, or it translated us, or predestinated us. And all these words that's used right there in the book of Ephesians, they're used, they're put there for a purpose, and that purpose is that we understand God's reasoning to do as what Ephesians talks about there in the opening uh, verses there when it speaks about, about what he did in the beginning before the world, that we be holy and without blame before him in love. God has a design purpose, not, not just that he might gather all things together in one, but the underlining issue with that gather what all things, just, just only the heaven and earth. There are, there are, there are ones that are, that, that are going to be bringing forth glory in that, you know, it's similar if you, and I, I, I like use the terminology. If you, if you look at someone, if they have a business, when someone says, one day I want to own my own business, they're not going to want to own their own business just to say they have a business. You know, you'd have a design purpose. The first question you'd ask is, well, what do you want to do? You know, or, or, or what, what uh, type of business do you want to own? And then even with that, when you get down to that there, when you get down to that predestinated plan, you, you, you have people that are going to bring forth, bring out your will. You're going to, if you, you have a donut shop, you know you can't, you're not going to want to um, just have the building sit there. You, your design is to, to bring forth uh, a, a your will in that business. But also there are people that, or ones that are going to, 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 to get it off the ground, so to speak, ones that are going to uh, uh, bring forth to be an extension of you. And that's what we're, we're seeing here. What, what we see and what I want to keep into, uh, put into perspective and, 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 and put into your mind of uh, your realm of thinking is to which purpose that, that when, we see, when we read the verses here, when God says, when God has Paul say here, all the things of hath made us and, and, and all these uh, different things, that there's design, a design purpose that we bring forth honor and glory unto him. That he is, we are being put on display. But let's move on. Look at Ephesians 1, look at verse 4. Ephesians 1, verse 4. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. See, this is what I mean here. When you look at, you look at what's being shown here about the, um, he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that, we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Now, when you look at this and what I just read there, you look at all the future uh, plans, so to speak, that there was a predestinated plan that we be something and we've been made something. He's chosen us. He's made us. He's predestinated us, as verse five there, uh, verse five there says, 
all these different things he's done and these things are being has been has been done for us why Ver, look at verse 4 that we should be holy without blame before him in love and, and of course it's by his good pleasure but it's into the adoption of children but also that we be to the praise of the glory of his grace and and, and it is to his praise of, and glory of his grace he's made us accepted in the beloved now look at verse 7 in whom we have redemption through his blood these are provisions that well those are provisions too but but this is something that that is a is a permanent possession of course and it's almost similar to to if you're if you're running down a layout of, of a business yourself and you say well well what I intend I intend on be, um, this type of business I intend on uh, it being uh, number one I intend on serving the public and I intend on doing this and then you get to the point of saying well but the people that I hire they're going to be this type of person. They're going to be professional. They're going to be friendly. They're going to be this. They're going to be that. And then you go out and you hire them. Well, what you see in verse 7 is God God saving them, the, the sinners. And we have redemption through his blood. And the, the, these are the players, so to speak. The, we are the ones that, that are going to get this accomplished. And that's what, what you're going to see uh, in here as well. And some, when they look at this, all they see is just verse 7. And when, when you get down to, to, to the verses, when it talks about what he's done for us, verse 11, I mean, verse 12, 13, when he says um, about the, you trusted and believed and all that, and, and they just only see salvation here. But uh, verse 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Notice all this here, all these good things we have hath made known he he had bounded toward us in all wisdom now what this says is when you get to verses four and four through six this is his plan his plan is he's chosen us he's made us predestinated us that he has children faithful perfect sons uh, that would be ones who would be the adoption would be ch children faithful children unto him not not uh, as the children over there in Ephesians 4, when it says that we be no more children, ones that are not perfect men. But now because you know, because he it's his plan that we be this, he also in verse 8, he has abounded toward us. That's the perfect sons in all wisdom and prudence that we be, that we have that and be that having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure which he had purposed in himself, and the mystery of his will is things of what you see him being unfolded before your eyes right here. Verse 10, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both are which are in heaven and which are on the earth, even in him. And that gathering together all things they're going to, again, as I said before, it's not just that when some people look at what God's overall plan is, some people say, well, his plan is to save us. You know, he's, we, you know, we believe in Christ and we have hope in heaven. And some people only just, just get to that, to that part. But then some would say, well, yeah, of course, so we won't go to hell and he saved us, but also he's, uh, he, he's going to uh, reconcile all things back onto himself. You know, both which are in heaven and which are in the earth. Now, again, that is a great understanding to understand. But there's much more to it than that. There are the 
the the saints, the, the ones that perfect saints, not just ones that are going to just go to heaven or ones that are going to be part of his earthly kingdom here with Israel. Yeah, you, you see with, with, uh, with the nation of Israel, there's going to be some greater and some least in the kingdom. And, and the ones, it, it, and if you know Israel's program, you'll know that the ones that are the least in the kingdom, those are ones who, who can't, who are not going to bring forth that honor and glory. Ones that 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 uh, that actually produce functional death. But the ones that are the perfect ones, the ones that are the uh, the the strong in the in the in the kingdom of priests, those are the ones that the Lord talks about. Those are the ones when you read Hebrews to Revelation, and it talks about those faithful, and it talks about those beloved brethren. The ones that are um, the, the chosen, those are ones that that the Lord, that, that God speaks of. Those are the ones that bring forth honor and glory unto him. We too, when you look at what Paul talks about, when he gets the from Ephesians, uh, Philippians, Colossians, that's 1st and 2nd Thessalonians. And when he goes and talks to Timothy and Titus and Philemon, these are ones who Paul is speaking of to bring forth honor and glory that he can glory in, that he can say, well, we, we, we glory in you. <laughs> and, 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 and he speaks of them as being the faithful. Again, God's purpose is that we too be ones as uh, uh, ones that are spoken of, ones that are even mentioned throughout time, that he, as the Priscilla and Aquila, the ones, the 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 Philemon, the the Titus, the, the 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 Timothy, those saints are forever etched in time, because they were made a spectacle. They were ones that put the word of God on display. They were ones that that took God's word and 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 and, and made it um, justified in its saying. But it was through them, they being being uh, an earthen vessel themselves, but the excellency of the power was, was made known in them. In, in them, but had the word of God showing out. And, and this is what God's plan and purpose is for us, that we too be ones that, that, that are not just only justified, but ones that are going to be to his praise, honor, and glory. And as we get into this, when we get to verses 11, when you get down there, and you get to verse 11 when it says, in whom we have received an inheritance. We're going to get to that at the end of the study. Being predestinated unto, according to the purpose of him, which worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. It, that inheritance. Now, once you know what we know here in verse 10, all the way up to this point, now you're to understand that inheritance. You're to understand now your identity now. And not only are you just only uh, as, as we look upon it today, born of the same household or of the same father, we are ones that that are that are able to be fully educated. It's almost it out might be the last time I liken this to something else, but if you have children, you, you just say you have five children, but you send but you all all of them just say you they're they're all around the same age. Some dropped out of school. You get a couple that went through school but didn't go to college, but you sent the but one of them did. That one had a desire to finish school, get their masters, get their doctrine, to get all, all these things to be in your business so they can be your CEO. That's one that God uh, desires that we be as that one there. He, it, and that's part of our will that our children be that. That they fulfill all things and be what we what we see um, here, knowing that we have abounded toward them, our children, our wisdom, our understanding, the way we we look upon and tell them the pitfalls of this life or the or the great things in going to school. But let's move on. Let's get into the study here. Okay, and. Uh... And again, we're we're here in uh, Ephesians survey in lesson 15. And again, as we're looking at the adoption of children, we are looking at 
the whole issue, as I said before, about being that adopted ch child, if you will, or the adopted son, perfect son, who now God is wanting to put on display. God is wanting for he he's wanting men of this world, the angels in the third heaven, and also Satan himself to, to bear witness to, to his children, to his perfected saints, to his perfected sons. And also, whereas he can, uh, it's to his praise, honor, and glory that we be made a spectacle unto the world. And that's why this is vital because you know, it, it, as I said before, it's as if we you have a you have a a proud parent and they want to brag on their child, so to speak, and they, and, and they want you to uh, uh, bear witness to 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 just how much they've grown and how much they they've taken what we've taught them, and now they want you, the parent wants you to behold the glory, and it's also to the parent's glory that the child is now made a spectacle unto others. But look look again at Ephesians chapter uh, 2. Ephesians 2, look at verse 4. Ephesians 2, verse 4. But God, who was rich in, um, who was rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he hath loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace he saved. Now, again, notice what he's done for us hath quickened us. These are these are provisions that we, and you're going to see these provisions that have been made for us so that we can be all that he has called us to be to his praise, honor, and glory. And that's why when you see in Ephesians 1 verse 4, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. And these things he's done. And many times when people I say, look at this here, all they look at is, oh, we're saved. Oh, when we were dead in sins, oh, and in grace are we saved? We saved through faith. And, and not looking at the hath quickened us together with Christ. You know, missing over that sanctifying part. But look at verse 6. And hath raised us up together. There, there's another thing he's made us, he's, he's did. And made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And when people look at this, as I said, they only see we've been saved. We, we were not going to hell. Now we're going to be in heaven. But this is talking about a, a glory here. This is talking about to his praise, honor, and glory is why this was accomplished for us. The idea he, uh, in that he loved us. Look at uh, verse 7. That in the ages to come. Notice this is all to a, a, a future intent, but it's not all talking about the future intent. But it's talking about what he's done for us to meet an objective, a future objective as well. Verse 7, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself that is the gift of, is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast, for we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we shall walk in them. Wait a minute. This says not of works in verse 9. But then over here in verse 10, it says that we shall walk it or, um, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Which God ordained before that we should walk in them. Well, again, it's not a contradiction here. And I know you ought to know this, but... We're not saved by works. We're not justified unto eternal life by works. But it is by his by faith that we just seen that. Grace through faith, we see that. But again, this is a the works is sanctification works. It is works being justified unto eternal life. Ones that are already his. Those we ought to be, we ought to walk in those good works, and that's what's being shown there. But again, you see all those provisions. He's made us to sit. He's quickened us. He, uh, um, 
We're seated in heavenly places, at, you know, and all these things. These are provisions that are made. But again, we're the ones he's he's making us that. And, and, and again, as I say, and I like I liken this to what any parent can understand. The things that we do to uh, for our children's success, you know, we'll say things like uh, we, we, we took them to school or we we um, we we paid their tuition, um, um, gave them the computer for homework and all these things we do. And we're giving them we're setting them up for a brighter future. Our father. And, and, and again, it's for their glory. But it also we glory in it as well. We are being made a spectacle, but there's things God has provided, things God has made us. He's made us these things, or as this has chosen us for that purpose. And, and again, folks, when we get just making sure we understand this body of doctrine, because when we get past this, we're going to be going to verse 11. When verse 11 says, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his will. We'll get into that in a little bit, but now we're going to be looking. This all is summing up our inheritance. This is why we're spending so much time. This is the 15th lesson. Um, we're, we're, you know, 15th lesson in those 10 verses there. Because it's very vital that we get this and understand to have that understanding when we get to understand about the inheritance that we have and, and the adoption of children and understanding that. Because again, the, the word children is not the same children as over in Ephesians chapter four. It speaks about that we be no more children, but this is a group of children that are made up of faithful brethren faithful sons and daughters in Christ, ones that are perfect, that that be a group of adoption of children that he can say, have you considered my servants? Have you it, it, ones that will bring forth honor and glory, ones that he predestinated that there will be, that there will be a group of individuals in Christ that will be strong. And in the Lord's day, I, I tell you like this, the, over in the, uh, Romans 16, in Romans 16, you have faithful children there that Paul, even Paul himself, he was amongst those to who he said would lay down their neck for his life. And he called them fellow helpers, faithful, and all these different words, co-laborers and every, all those, they were part of ones that God could, could say, uh, a part of faithful children, faithful sons and daughters, children as a group there but let's move on come over here to colossians chapter one colossians one look at verse uh, 10 colossians 1 verse 10 that he might walk worthy unto uh, might walk worthy of the lord unto all pleasing that's pleasing him of course being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Now, again, walking worthy of the Lord is worthy of who the Lord called us to be. And when we are walking worthy of who he called us to be, that will be well-pleasing. Not walking worthy of, of, your, of the pastor or the church uh, traditions and things like that, but of the Lord, not of the pastor or of anyone else unto all pleasing that's all pleasing unto him being fruitful in every good work and being fruitful is you not just only just doing something every now and then a good work every now and then but fruitful bringing forth much fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of god always learn forever learning but coming into the knowledge of the truth of God. Verse 11, strengthen with all might, according to his glorious power, unto all patience long and long suffering with joyfulness. You know, and um, this is, you look at this here, strengthen with all his might. 
But Juan Wingo said, all his might, all his might to us word is what this is saying. According to his glorious power to us, unto all patience and long suffering with what? Joyfulness. Giving thanks unto the Father which hath, notice this, made us meet. And notice this part, to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Notice again the inheritance. And, and, I, and again, I'm using this because when we get to Romans 11, uh, Ephesians 1, verse 11 and through verse 14, the word inheritance is going to be used twice there. And you want to know, and that's why we're doing this, about this inheritance that we have. Inheritance, you're inheriting something from your father. But again, you see, he says, made us meet. He, he's made us to meet, to be something for an identity. The identity to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. That's the point of what we're looking at here, folks, is, is what God has made us. What we are part we are partakers of something with other saints and look at verse 13 who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son now you know i'm gonna go when we get to verse 11 ephesians 1 verse 11 i'll go more into the inheritance and what actually all entails with this inheritance um and the idea we're looking at the provisions of the inheritance but Notice here, he made us meet to be partakers. Verse 13, he translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Verse 14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. And I said before, people, they only see just those few things there about the about the, even saved and the only way to heaven type thing, you know, and not even looking at what else is entailed with our sanctification and our our exaltation as laboring with him but um uh, but again we but he's delivered us for a purpose but he's he's delivered us from the power of darkness and he's translated us for a purpose you know not just so he delivered you so you won't go to hell and translated you so you can go to heaven you know that's 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 not all that, that that's involved here you know, there's 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 much more. But let's see. Okay. What we'll do, we'll take a look at it. we'll we'll continue on in, in um Colossians there, chapter one. But what I want to do is um, you know, uh, bring back to your recollection um what we're what we're what we've passed, what we went through in a sense. But leading up to this point here, and at this point here, it is so vital to understand this inheritance that we have. And like, as I said before, we're going to get to that next time. But an understanding that we've been made a spectacle and all that we've seen, all that, 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 that's been given unto us, that's been revealed. And even, even from Romans 16, when we were in Romans 16, we saw about that power now to him that is of power to establish you and 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 then all those things about about the um the good of, of knowing the, his good and 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 and, and being and not understanding and, and understanding what is the evil unto god and and we're, we're to be aware of that but all that's leading up to a point where you can uh these saints will now be able to walk worthy. That's the point in, in understanding now, once you know this, once you understand who God has made you to be in Christ as a perfect son, not just justified unto eternal life and, and, and you are and you ought to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God. And, and not only just that you are uh, a son, you have an adoption as a son, a, a faithful son, now you're to know that about the perfecting of that and that in that perfecting now you can walk worthy and bring forth fruit unto holiness now you can you can actually prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of god 
Why? Because how do you know the perfect will of God? A perfect man would. One's operating upon perfect knowledge, being strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power. They will be able to understand what is, what's his will. And that's the point in being a spectacle. God wants to be able to say, uh, he, I don't want to use the word, uh, we, what we do, and I'll just say this, we make, we brag about our children. We boast of our children. We'll tell someone if our children is getting ready to graduate magnum cum laude, if they're getting ready to graduate top of the class, if they if they got their doctrine and then they 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 were the top of that class and everything else, what are we just gonna we're not gonna say anything about it? Of course we are. We're gonna let the world know. We're gonna let the world know what our children accomplished. And in looking at the way what God wants to do. We are made a spectacle. It's the only way we can put the glory, the, uh, put this glory on display, wherein, wherein he can glory in us, wherein we can be, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. That's before him, before his eyes, before him in love, out of his selfless love. But let's move on. Let's come over here to um, Colossians 1. Look at verse 20. Colossians 1. And we're going to take a look at verse 20 here. And, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And again, when you're seeing that stuff there, when you're seeing that uh, being used, Again, our, our emphasis should not always be on just justification unto eternal life. But understanding here in Colossians, who these were mature saints, they were saved. But what he does is he shows that cross and he shows what Christ's sacrifice and his love and the grace of God, what all that accomplished for us. And he says, by this, serve him. By this, operate upon selfless love. By this, you live you live and walk in godliness and, and bring forth fruit, good fruit, good works. Be fruitful unto every good work. Verse 21, and you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind, by wicked works, now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you, notice this, holy and unblameable and approval in his sight. Do you see where it's going to? The cross is mentioned. Then in verse 22, it shows his sacrifice and it shows to present you holy and unblameable and approvable in his sight. Why? Why would we be because of what we are being taught by our Lord and Savior and our, and our Father. Look at Colossians uh, chapter 2 now. And ye are complete in him. Oh, verse 10, sorry. Which is the head of the body, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Bury with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. Now, we've seen here, Colossians 1, verse 21, and you that were sometimes alien, alienated enemies. And then it says he reconciled, and then verse 22, to present you holy and unblameable. Now, that presenting and that uh, reconciling, and again, provisions made by him. Uh, and then when you see in Colossians 2, when it says, wherein ye are, ye are risen with him. Again, these things, folks, the only way we're going to be a spectacle unto him is if we be holy 
unblameable, reprovable in his sight. And also be, the idea be a, we are risen with him. Those things being risen with him, these are operations, operations and identities that we have in Christ. We have these identities. We have these things in Christ that we be. We be. We, 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 have, an, we have an identity that we be, but it's, it's in him. It's after his likeness, in his image. It's, it's, it's having the mind of Christ. These are things that we be, that we be as per our inheritance. And um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to move a little quicker here to, to try to um, not go so long in a sense. Um, but let's just move on. Let's take a look at some other things. Look at Colossians. Since we're in Colossians, look at chapter 3. Remember Ephesians chapter 2, when we saw in Ephesians 2, we saw when it said we are, um, and that raised us up together and made us to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Well, look at this here. Look at Colossians 3 verse 1. If ye be then risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. And we are risen with Christ. And, and, and that's what we be, if ye then be, that's your identity. You, you are risen with Christ. And, 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 you know, you can think about if ye be then risen with Christ doctrine. It is what we, we're looking at here. Seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. For ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. And that, and, and that's another thing we are, we are dead and our life is hid and, and, and setting our affection on things above. That's where our, our attention ought to be on. These are things that we are, folks. We, we, but these are also things that are going to make us a spectacle that have, we've been made a spectacle and being made a spectacle. These, this is what we are as that spectacle. So be fruitful when we are, uh, in our walk. Understanding what is being said, what is being, what we do is, can be spoken reproachfully of or can be gloried, gloried in. Look at 1 Thessalonians now. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, look at verse 3. Remember without ceasing your, ceasing your work of faith, labor of love, and patience of hope in Christ Jesus in the Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of in the sight of God and Father. Notice in the sight of God and Father and our Father. What why does why does why do you think it says in the sight of God? Do you think that it's saying in the sight of God when, when you stand before him, or do you think it's now in the sight of God? That's now. <laughs> That's, that's now. We are made a spectacle unto God, unto the angels, unto men. Knowing, beloved brethren, your election of God, for our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and much assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. Notice this here, verse 6. And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word of much affliction with joy. Notice again, uh, you, we've seen over in Colossians about that tribulation with joy. And then now you see here about in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. And then again, um, but people can't understand that. They can't understand how how could a person how could a person think say something like that? But see, it's foolishness to them who are not in Christ. It's foolishness to them if a person says that, and 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 to say to say you can be um, um, going through going through sufferings, but with joy. 
and 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 and, and again, as I said there before, folks, um, you know, and that was Colossians one when one eleven when it says, "Strength with all might according to His glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness." Patience, long suffering with joyfulness, and then when you see over here when it says about the um, about your um, about with joyfulness here, you know, it, it, it's just, it, it's something, you know, with joy, it says, ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word and much affliction with joy. Well, why did they do that? Because they knew they were made a spectacle. They knew that, they knew their election, as verse 4 says, knowing, beloved brethren, your election of God. And also, they saw Paul as an example because they knew what manner of man men they were for their sake. But again, as you, as it says, you became followers of us. They received the word with much uh, and had much affliction with joy. They were they were um, understanding what that pertained to. They knew that when they when they got there, when they when they received those. Um, afflictions, they could, they could point right back to Paul and the brethren with him and understand what well, they went through it. And they're rejoicing in that. And they too were able and learned how to rejoice as well. They too learned to rejoice and because they knew it was for Christ's sake. You know, if, if you see a way that you can bring forth glory and honor to our parents, that we can we can please them. Why wouldn't we? If we know that, and I'm gonna tell you like this: many people graduate from school or college, and some of them know that they're doing it for their parents' sake. And what I mean by that, we know that they're gonna be they're the ones that're gonna have the career. I get that. But what I'm saying is, when the motivating factor, when they feel like pulling their hair out. When they feel like just throwing them in the towel and saying, you know what, I'm going to drop out of school. They, the, the first ones they always resort back to thinking about is parents. Whether the parents is going to lay down the hammer on them <laughs> or, or whether they'll disappoint their parents. 99% of the time, the kid always resorts back to, I'm going to do this for his sake or her sake. And you see with us, with, the, with what God's word says, when we, when we being made a spectacle, and Paul makes mention, if eh, we get time, matter of fact, we might even look at that next. Uh, I'll make sure we look at that next because we want to see, we're going to be looking at First Thessalonians next. But again, but I also want to take a look at um, First Corinthians also because I want to look at that spectacle issue because I want you to, grasp what being made a spectacle is and sometimes spectacle being being made a spectacle is not always a good thing sometimes it can be made a good thing people don't mind to be the bell of the ball or or the um um have all eyes on me so to speak but it's it can be a bad thing too but in this sense we being made a spectacle unto uh, uh, were in the sight of God, in the sight of the angels, as Ephesians three ten talks, uh, three verses nine through eleven talks about. There, we can be made a spectacle, and the manifold wisdom of God may be met, might be made known by the church. His manifold wisdom, but we are the ones putting it on display, and it's this in on display to who? How do they know? Because they can, they they also can see. But let's let's move on. Come over to First First Thessalonians and look at chapter two. First Thessalonians chapter two. Look at verse twelve. That we that we that ye would walk worthy of the Lord, who hath called you unto His kingdom and glory. Notice the walking again. All this walk here, 
and worthy of God? Well, how would God know? He is before him, before him. For this cause also we thank thank we God without ceasing, because when you receive the word of God which you heard of us, you receive it not as the word of man, but as in, in truth, the word of God which effectually worketh in you that believe. And again, walking worthy of who he called us to be. Look at verse 14. This is what I'm after. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, in which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered the like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews. And this is what they became. They weren't that before, but they became followers of the churches of God. Which are, which are in Judea. And you know what kind of saints were in Judea? The the ones that were going through the most sternest, the most stern um, persecution. See, with all the Diana worship going on with the Gentiles, that was light persecution. But the Jew, he persecuted those, the church in Judea. He persecuted them unto death daily. And these Thessalonians were receiving the similar like persecution. Now come over to first um first Corinthians, and like I said before, we'll look at this uh the issue of made a spectacle. But in that first Thessalonians chapter four, chapter two, I mean verse 14, it was ye became followers. That's what they did with okay, first Corinthians chapter four. Let's look at chapter verse. Look at verse eight, chapter four, verse eight. <laughs> ah, okay. Look at um, yeah. Now ye are full. Now ye are rich. Ye have reigned as kings without us. And I would to God that ye did reign, that we might also reign with you. Notice he's going to be talking about reigning. In in the reigning, Paul is talking about that they were reigning but it was amongst their own people but look what he says i would to god ye did reign he's talking about a different reign uh that we also might reign with you for i think that god has set forth us the apostles last as it were appointed to death for we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. But notice, for I think God's have set us the apostles last. And, and, and being made that spectacle unto the world and unto angels and unto men. That's what I was after there. That's that's what that's that's we're under the microscope, so to speak. And when we look at anyone that has a business or anything like that, you know, the owner. He knows that the people at the counter greeting those people, they represent, they represent that guy. And he wants you to be, he wants you to, he's going to give you a uniform that's befitting of the company. He's going to give you a, he's going to have the, the appearance of the place when you walk in there. It's going to, you, you're going to be able to uh, feel, feel right at home so that, or feel pleasant when you walk in there. He's, he's made his business his business is uh, his the uh, the aspect of it is it's a spectacle to the world, and if people get the get a wrong one wrong work, they could be turned off from that company and never go back. He knows this is an extension of him, or what he desired to be. But let's move on. Come over to Ephesians one, and and what I want to do now is remember we we looked at uh, verses one through. 10 and verse 10 when it says that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God then look at verse 11 here Ephesians 1 verse 11 this is where we're going to be at um, next week in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. 
Now, again, that's why it's vital to look at that adoption of children and understand and also understand the importance of understanding our inheritance, some of our inheritance, but also uh, will be made a spectacle. So now when we get to verse 11 here, hey, you can know we, we've obtained an inheritance. Hey, you know, we, you see that over there. The adoption of children and all these things being predestinated according to the purpose of him. We, you saw that over there in, in verses uh, 2, 3, and 4. And, and, and then it says here, uh, according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. And this is letting you know this is all to his will. Verse 12, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. And, you know, I don't want to spend too much time on these things here because we're going to touch on it when we get to that section. So I'm going to pretty much just read um, read it. And I might highlight a couple of things, but I'm not going to get in depth into it. But again, that we should be. Again, here's another identity of being made a spectacle to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation in whom also after that ye, ye believed <clears throat> you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise and again verse 12 who first trusted in Christ hmm. we'll get to that next time um yeah, we'll get to that next time. I don't want to get into that now. Uh, look at verse um, 14, 14, which is the earnest of, notice this, our inheritance until the redemption redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory, which is the earnest of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. We're, again, we're going to get into all of that then but notice again praise of his glory look at verse 12 that we should be to the praise of his glory then verse 14 uh unto the praise of his glory you notice how many times you see the word glory unto the praise of his glory and and, and over and over verses 1 through 10 glory and as i said before as a proud parent ones that we ourselves that what we we can glory in when our children are meeting our expectations when they have been made this when they have been uh, the first day they start their career we're going to be that proud parent you know we're, we're going to be the ones we're, there's going to be there's glory we don't like to use we don't use that word um as in our being the proud parent, but we, but what this speaks of, that we be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted Christ, and that which is the earnest of our inheritance, unto the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. These are all verses that, that um, the, our father, is he can glory in us. Ones who are made a spectacle, and we are made that we've been meet to be a spectacle and be holy and without blame before in love. But again, folks, next time we're going to do, we'll be we'll be looking at um verse eleven. Then we'll be looking at verse eleven. We'll probably look at verse ten. We'll wind it back and look at verse ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. And then now we're going to be looking at 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 a different section of. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1 a very important section very important in the sense that now you understand that you are an adopted son and you are a faithful perfect man unto the adoption of children unto his glory praise and honor now what do you do with this inheritance that's what's going to be be talked about that's what verse 11, in whom we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his will. Then it says, 
that we should be to the praise of his glory. But that's, you got the inheritance. Now, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to be to the praise of his glory? Are you going to approve what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God? And that's what, that's the point here. That's what's being shown. That's what we're going to be looking at. And a little more into it than that, than just only that. But we'll see when we get there. And uh, we'll, 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 we'll try to try to find ourselves, um, um, we'll find ourselves hopefully out of the chapter, 1 Corinthians, the first Ephesians chapter 1, um, maybe in a, in, a, in a few, we'll, we'll see. We don't want to, you know, we want, don't want to set, set things, um, set a little time frame on it, you know, but, but we'll, we'll get to it when we get to it there. <laughs> but what I want to do is I got to make sure I get all this set up here. But now, as I said before, we'll get into Ephesians chapter uh, 1 and we'll, we'll begin at verse 11 uh, next time. But I want to thank everyone for tuning in. Until next time, thank you.